everybody. My name is Mark Hilliard. I'm a master on the Arcanum. And uh, tonight we are with uh, James Daniels, and we're going to be doing his level four critique. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to him. He's going to tell us a little bit about him, and then we'll go into his images. Um, my name is Jimmy Daniels. I've been doing photography for uh, just under a year now. I had an old Rebel film 35 millimeter years ago, probably 15, 20 years ago now, and put it away. Life took over, and late last year I bought a camera and started kind of playing with it. Um, I live in an area that has large variety of shooting abilities, where I can go to the coast or I can go to the the nice woods and shoot different stuff. And I wanted to start shooting stuff that people really kind of walked by, drove by, and didn't didn't realize was under their nose. So I just kind of got into it. I've never really taken I've never taken any formal photography stuff. Um, I've read and listened. That's how I've learned to photo take pictures. Okay, very good. Well, let's just jump right into it and go take a look, see, here at your images. I'm going to share my screen with you. Um, Mike did not get an invite. Sorry. It's all right. Mike and Jennifer both, sorry. Okay. So here's your first image. Tell us a bit about it, what you were thinking. Um, this picture was taken not so long ago, so I've started, in my head, started trying to frame um, a lot of stuff better. Some of the comments you made on my first introduction pictures spoke to composition and, and how I look at stuff. Um, and so this was uh, on the way home from a, a weekend trip. We'd gone through several parks and and stuff, and I'd been I worked over in this area years ago on the ambulance, and I just kind of wanted to go down and see what was there. Um, anyway, we ended up in this little park, and this is the old bridge that goes across the Apalachicola River, just below Jim Woodruff Dam. Um, and there's a bridge to the, if you're looking at this picture to the right of it, um, that I actually had to do some cloning, get, get it out of the way. Okay. Um, but I just kind of felt like I was standing in the belly of some ancient dinosaur or something like that. It was really dark down there. You could see the sun wasn't in the best position for this picture. But it was just so dark under this bridge and in this area because of the canopy that mm -hmm. it just gave an eerie feel. And so I just kind of looked up and I liked the lines. I liked just the way it looked, the way it led down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, is the bridge still in use? It is only a partial bridge now. It goes out um, just to the river. So it's a fishing bridge now. I don't know that you can get to the end of it to fish anymore. You may be able to get out there. You have to walk probably a half a mile back from behind, behind me in this picture. Oh, okay. And then walk out probably, so it's probably close to a mile walk. All right. Um, so the the old bridge is right over here that you did the cloning? Correct. Right right where your cursor is, and then down at the end there's some, there's some of it. You could see it. It was... Uh, like blue in color. Okay. Um, now, what lens did you use? Do you remember? This was my, um, I believe it's an 18 to 105. Okay. Probably right down at 18, huh? Yeah, it was pretty low. Yeah, because I, you, you know how you can tell. See how the trees all are, are bending in towards the center? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a sign of a, of a wide angle. Pancaking in. Yeah. All right. Well, the image itself is very interesting. Um, you've got really good control on the exposure and that you've got detail. The structure underneath the bridge all the way down. Um, and that's, that's pleasing considering how dark it must have been down there. Um, 
I like the composition. I like the fact that we're coming in an angle and then going down to this vanishing point down at the end. Uh, that works very well. You've got good, tea de good detail in the tree. Um, they're nice and green. I can see individual uh, leaves. Uh, everything looks nice and sharp. I'm surprised we don't see any little critters hanging out under the bridge. There's that that view right there where you had. There's a stick under the bridge. I got a close-up view of it. I took mm -hmm. a second picture in there. It looks like an alien arm sticking out from under it. Oh, okay. Right here. Yeah. Just go to your to the right of the picture as you're looking at it. See it right there. Oh. The middle of the bridge. Yeah. Hmm. Somewhere in there, there's a, there's a stick under there. It looks weird in one of the pictures I got. I showed it. My, you know, yeah. No, I can see it. It's it's coming out and ending right here. Yeah. You gotta wonder how that happened, huh? Yeah. It's very good detail. Um, and that was a, a a very good attention to what you're shooting and noticing that. Um, the sky is a, a, a wee bit blown out over here, but the sun was probably over on this side. It was. I think it was just actually um, down a little bit lower, it, almost in the crook where that tree comes together, just below okay, your face. Right. Okay. Right in there, down, yeah, somewhere right, uh, yeah. in the bottom of that sliver. Yeah, and you've got good control of the sky nevertheless. We've got some light blues over here. It's not blown out, light blues. Uh, in this area, it's just where the sun is. It's a shame that the sun didn't actually come out into this crook here, so it was facing right into your lens. Mm -hmm. Then you could have gotten the starburst. Um, but it's it's very well done. I like everything you've done with it. Uh, the composition's pleasing. Um, we we come in here and we go right down. Uh, and exit out the bottom of the image, which is just as it should be. Um, your exposure control is very, very well done. Like I said, I know how, how hard it must have been to do this. It must have been quite dark under there. It was. Uh, it was a, I was using a remote release and on the tripod. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I like this. This this is this is a very good first image on your first critique. Um, and as such, I'm going to give you a two and a half on this. Um, did you watch the tutorial yesterday? Yeah, um, the, the post processing tutorial. Yeah. You you remember was, how how we moved the blue from the yep. over the train sky? We could probably do that here too very easily. Um, this might be an interesting image to play with that on, just to see what happens. I had to get used to the uh, the technique. Okay. Okay. Uh, but very nice. Um, we're gonna skip this one and go straight to this one. Um, this is the place where I like to take sunrise at. Um, this is actually sunrise on St. James Bay. It's about a Probably about a 35 minute drive for me to get here. There's actually some docks. This pine tree, or this palm tree, is um, just east of a dock that I walk out on to get out actually on the bay to, to stand and take pictures of. Okay. Um, and the reason I took this picture is because I was out there and my camera battery died, and I was scrambling back in and just kind of turned around and seen this shot, um, and kind of took I took several of this shot. Um, the other palm tree, the one you want to skip, was shot at a later date. Okay. It was shot at really, it was one of those things that, that motto, always turn around and look behind you. I scrambled, down, I scrambled back down the dock to get a battery and turn it around. I was like, wow. You know, it's, and I just, I just love the cl clouds in it and how it looked. Um, I've got one later, once I got back out on the dock, where it kind of looked like a, that top cloud looks like an eyebrow. Okay. Just the way it, I just love the way the clouds did. Um, and the darkness at the horizon is natural. It's not, there was no light there. 
Um, I've looked at several pictures. My wife actually looked at some pictures on her phone, and it's just how that came up. Well, there's a there's a cloud bank here. You see how it's going down? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it, the sun's burning through it here, but then it continues on over here. So this is a solid bank of clouds. Right. So right. this works very well. Uh, the composition is extremely pleasing. Uh, the use of the tree as a foreground object worked very well. Um, you, you have room at the top of the tree, you have room at the bottom. The exposure is very good, and we're getting those wonderful colors of the sunset. Um, or is this a sunrise? I don't it's remember. A, what, it's a sunrise. Okay. Um, yeah, we're getting good undercloud reflections. Um, uh, nice darker blues up here. I'm seeing detail through the palm. Okay, um, this works very well. You have some nice foreground here. Um, the, the, the reflection of the sun and the water works. And this is a high speed image. This is 1 400th. So this is fairly fast. At first when I looked at this, I was thinking that maybe it was a, a longer exposure, but the bay was really quiet, wasn't it? It was... Um Absolutely alive with bait fish. I've got several pictures from out on the dock. We actually watched a black tip shark fin this morning. Oh, yeah? Actually, about 200 yards from us straight out towards the sunrise, he actually breached. About, probably about three foot. Okay. It was really a beautiful morning. It was you know, just a magical morning, morning on the bay. You know, this, this, this is lovely. I like this. Uh, this is a solid three image. Uh, I don't see any noise in the sky. I don't see any sensor dots. Um, what a marvelous morning, and to be there and capture that, that has to have made you feel good. My favorite place. Okay, I can see why. Anyways, we're going to give you three on that. Um, okay, now we're going to do this one. I'm All right, so... Do this, this one, one second. Yeah, I, I played... This is that, that piece of advice I should have... You'll notice the other two... Pictures don't match what I put up in my pre-critique, and I should have taken this one out. I really like this picture for a couple of reasons. Again, it's the same place, different morning. Um, if I told you about the blunder I made this morning, you would probably kick me out of the group. Ah, never happened. Well, okay, if you look at the metadata, it says it's shot on a Canon. Uh -huh. uh, I believe a 70D. I don't own that. Um, it's a friend of mine who I shot with that morning card because my memory card was sitting on my table in my card reader. Uh -huh. So anyway, we got down there and actually behind us, this is again looking just like the other picture, I just stepped over to the other side of the of the palm tree. Right. I, I, there was thun, there was lightning behind us. There was a lightning storm coming in off the gulf coming into the town behind us. And we actually were paranoid about being stormed on. But, but I love the clouds. I've actually, I think I got a better picture than this one. I just kind of got tired of working with these pictures and just was over them. Yeah, you get the, it way, happens. Yeah, I love the way the clouds give that depth to the, to the sky. And I, this was before the sun had even broken. This was probably 15 minutes before sunrise. It, yeah. it just started lightening up some. Yeah, we're in. The, we're at the end of the blue hour. You can tell by this 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 dark blue up here, mm -hmm. um, and the the fact that this orange is is straight across. Okay, um, this is a tough image. You're you're at that that time where you really really need to go into a longer exposure mode. Mm -hmm. um, for something like this, let's see what you do. Um, 0.8 second. Um, you really needed to shoot probably around 30 seconds with this. And you were at F5. If you had to drop that down to 20, you could have increased this exposure time and it would have smoothed the water out. More of the light reflected across it. 
Okay. You still would have had the cloud detail and this beautiful sky, but this the, the, the water would have been brighter with the reflection of the sky coming down on it. This is a this is a tough one to do. And I know we probably have not introduced you to the concept of NDs and long exposures, uh, but this is a prime candidate for, for changing over to that technique. And we've got to get you brought up to speed on using that. Because for your sunrise shots at this at this location, um, you could turn out some spectacular images, especially in the blue hour, like it is here. Okay. Um, I really do like this. Um, the tree is 100% silhouetted, which is okay, but the ground itself is too. So. What I would suggest for this image, okay, let's go back to our Photoshop, is to simply crop it. Okay. Take the ground out. Because I actually tried to clone it. A little. Yeah, I tried to clone this grass out and make it smooth, and it just never looked good. Um, because I always looked at this grass here in the corner as a distractor because it was not, it didn't match. Yeah, uh, that's, that's all I would do. Just leave a little bit of the ground right under the tree and let it go right down out of the frame. Okay. Okay. And I don't know if there's enough data to work with here, uh, but the, the image is certainly worthy of it. So let's just drop a point on the water here and see what we can get, okay? There we go. This was done before I found Vaviza. <laughs> oh, yeah, I understand that. And uh, oh, that's all I would do. I would just slightly brighten up that ocean surface so that it wasn't quite so dark. Okay. There we go. Just as simple as that. Uh, copy one over to this side. There we go. Um, I like the fact that the clouds are silhouetted. Um, I am going to drop a control point here to take that kind of back to where it should be. Okay. And just doing that is all that's necessary. Okay. Just get a little bit more brightness down here. Okay. We can see the surface. And uh, crop away that, that ground underneath like we did. And let's, uh, there it is before, there it is after. Just that simple. Okay? Yep. Um, good image, uh, good location. Um, just a little bit more exposure, maybe a half a stop and then everything else that we needed to do right here uh, in, in the water surface uh, with the Vives, okay? Look it up. Um, we're going to give you a two and a half on this one. I like it. And now we're going to go to the car. Um, this is, there's a guy who lives 10 minutes from my house who has out Probably 15 to 20 cars, and they are land. They are a landmark in this area. Um, the high school students do graduation prom pictures here. Families do. I can't tell you how many people I know who have had pictures taken amongst these cars. Um, they're kind of starting to. They're right on the as, edge of being really nice anymore, but they're really starting to go away very quickly. Um, they're starting to be vandalized a little bit and this was the first time I'd ever gone and shot these cars um, I got up and was just kind of wandering around didn't know where I wanted to go and I was like well I'm right here by them. let me shoot them and I didn't remember I kind of remember taking this picture this is one of those pictures that was a, the gym that I found when I got home yeah I have since gone back and reshot these and there's a couple of photos in there that I really like I showed this to my wife and her father before he died was a huge gearhead. Yeah. And she said this picture would hang on his wall and he would be he would love to have it. Mm -hmm. um, very little stuff was really done to this. 
post editing wise. Mm-hmm. Um, it just was one of those pictures where you know the blind hog find an ac- finds an acorn every now and then. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you bet you went back. That proves uh, that you realized what it was that you had. So um, I, I love the composition. I like the fact that we're looking through the spokes of the steering wheel. Um, the gear indicator is very, very sharp, uh, nicely defined, and this is where uh, our focal point should be. Uh, the fact that the switches back on the dashboard are fading off out of focus doesn't matter a bit. Uh, it doesn't matter about the steering wheel. Uh, the composition is nice. You place this over on the, the left hand one third line and PowerPoint. Um, the only thing that I can see that we might consider improvement is this brightness here. Um, maybe taking Vivisa and just slightly, ever so slightly darkening this because the, our eyes are drawn to this bright spot and it tends to stay here. We follow these bright lines up and down. See that? Right. Uh, maybe just slightly darkening this. Now, in a, a situation like this where the sun was shining through the windshield, mm-hmm. um, it would have been better to do the meter reading right here. Okay. Um, and exposed for this brightness. And then the darker areas we could have brought out in post-processing. Um, but these bright areas, these are really hard to control in post-processing. Um, you might be able to darken them just slightly. But if you go too far, they're going to turn a sickly shade of gray, okay? Yeah, I think I did darken the behind some with just adding shadows. Yeah. Processing. I just I think I bumped up the shadows and I think it worked pretty well because of how bright it was right there on the column. Yeah. All right, but this like I said this this is a very good image. And uh, now that I realize that you like these old cars, one of these days we're going to have to get you out to Old Car City with us. I may be there the same weekend you are. If you forget, I'm going to be up in that area. Yeah, this old it's it's just full of uh, I think it's like 200 square acres of yeah. thousands of these. I looked it up the other day online. But yeah, no, this, this, this is very nice. Uh, good job. I'm going to give you a two and a half on this image as well. And perhaps we can revisit this in a, in a, in a later level and see if we can do anything with this and make this even more appealing. Okay. But boy, it is very nicely exposed right under here. And uh, this is where, obviously, our main uh, subject point is. So that works. It works very well. Okay. Let's talk about this big boy. Um, This was taken over 4th of July weekend. This is on a a pond that's actually a bunch of springs that they've dammed up and made a pond. Um, And this was shot from a moving boat. Um, with a lens that I probably will never shoot again. Um, and I just, I just, it's going to be really hard for me to get back over to shoot this again. Mm-hmm. And so I just love this picture. I've got a couple pictures from this trip that I absolutely love, and this is one of them. Um, I had to do a lot of cloning and cropping, or cloning to get rid of, uh, you can see the fence if you look, Along the the shelter on the right, you can see there's a fence right in there. You were you were just up go up, and I'll go. Yeah, down. yeah. See, I, see, there's a black wrought iron fence in there. There's a trailer back there. Okay. Um, and if you zoom in right there, where the under that airplane, you can see a piece of it. Oh, okay. I just couldn't get rid of. You know, I just was like, I can't put anything in there. Um, but this was my first real effort in. Photoshop, you got to remember, Photoshop is really very new to me still, mm-hmm. of cloning and cropping and working in here and, and getting stuff. The It's not quite as sharp, and I think some of that is attributed just to the moving boat. It was windy that day. You can see there's a good breeze in the moss. Um, a lot of the pictures have the moss swinging, and I just think it was a great effect for looking at I 
this place was just kind of, we came around the corner and I was like, wow, I got to get a picture of that. No, you were shooting in an eighth of the, in an eight hundredth of a second. That should have been enough to stop all the action. Um, the the aperture is wide open, uh, so that's going to decrease the depth of field. But no, I think it's I think it's fairly sharp image. Okay, um, it looks good here. Um, I love how the red of the Texaco sign stands out and leaps out to our eye. Yeah. Uh, the, the dock house is wonderful. Uh, would you cut this tree down so I can see the gas pump, please? Yeah, yeah I know. I, I, and I don't have, I got three pictures of it, and I don't have a good view of either, in, in any of them. Uh, we, we, which way you're going, to the left or the right? We are going to the left of the building. Dang. Could you, you should have asked the boat driver to turn around and go back so you could shoot from a different angle to get that pump. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, that pump! That pump! I bet that's just magnificent. But the sign's pretty good too. Um, I like everything about this. Boy, good mood, good lines. Um, I love how the the, the Texaco boat house is being framed by the these trees and and the uh, the moss. It's just a very good image. Now the foregrounds. Nicely out of focus here so it doesn't interfere. And we pick up our focus right here at the base of this tree. Um, I like it. I, I don't think, aside from turning the damn boat around and going back over here so you can get the pump, um, I don't think there's really much that, you know, you could be suggested uh, for improvement. Uh, this this is a nice image. Um, maybe lightening up a bit here under the, the, the top of the, the, the dock house. But other than that, everything else looks really, really good. I, I like it, and I like your work. Uh, this is an extremely well done level four image. Well, thank you. The last two were the last two are your responsibility because you said I didn't have to use the same images. Uh -huh. Kind of gotten you kind of gotten tired of some of the ones I put up there. No, I don't get tired of anything, and and in fact, uh, whatever you choose is fine with me. Um, but you know what's missing here? A couple of guys playing cards. Yeah, and we need rocking chairs instead of these yeah. modern table and chairs out on the stock. I've got another. I've got another picture that I wanted to put in this critique, and it's a red dock with two of those plastic aqua turquoise chairs on it. And ah. it's it's a, to me is a beautiful picture. I just like this picture because of what's in it. Yeah, I like that doc, and that's we'll what. Po we'll post post that uh, that other color for one in, in the group, and we'll look at that. Okay. Uh, but no, this is very good. Uh, two and a half on this one too. Um, you know, you you, you put forth a, a very good group of images here. Um, not too shabby, and I'm going to level you up as soon as we get off of here. Okay. Um, I think you did an excellent job. Excellent job. Whoa, there's more people here. Yeah, lots of people came in. I Here I thought everybody was in bed. Yeah. Um, 